a pleasant good morning to everyone we give God thanks for another opportunity that he has afforded us to be able to come together one more time to worship him indeed we ought to give him the glory and the honor and the praise but because he surely deserves it I want to invite us to stand as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord and we'll do what the psalmist said enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good let's all stand open our mouths and we are going to sing bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul worship his holy name Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. My soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up; it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great and Your heart. Is kind. Whatever your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day, and on that day, when my strength is feeling the end was near. And my time has come Still my soul Sing your praise on me Ten 
thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing like never before, sing like never. Worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God, you are worthy you, of Lord, glory Jesus. and honor Hallelujah. and praise yes, and majesty and might and thanksgiving. There is no God like you. Yes. None can be compared to you. You have been our provider, our protector, our savior, our healer, our deliverer, Hallelujah. our Hallelujah. present help in time of trouble, yes. all that and so much more. Yes, Lord. God, you have been so loving, so kind, so yes. good so merciful yes, so forgiving yes, so helpful lord. Yes, lord we cannot make one step without you Jesus. the very breath that we breathe god comes from you yes, lord. we thank you this morning for all that you have done and continue to do in and through our lives and god as we gather today to worship you let your presence be manifested in the midst of us Lord, may you touch every heart and every life. Those who are not feeling well, we pray, God, that you will minister healing to them. Yes, Those who are troubled, Lord, bring peace to them. Yes, Those who are discouraged, bring encouragement to them. Yes, and those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior, may they come to know you before it is too late. Father, have your way in this service. Touch every one of us, Lord. And whatever you want us to do, help us to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All God's people shout in the house of God, since you are glad to be here. Let us shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we sing, Lord, I hunger. Father of life, draw me closer. Lord, my heart is set on you. Let me run the race of time. Hallelujah. Father of life, draw me closer. Lord, my heart is set on you. Let me run the race of time With your life unfold in mine And let the peace of God Let it win Father of life Father of life Draw me closer Lord, my eyes Lord, my eyes They set on you Let it rain. Oh Lord, I hunger. Oh Lord, I hunger for more of you. Rise up, present me. Let me know your truth. Oh Holy Spirit, saturate my soul and 
of Jesus. Do you want to go deeper this morning? Hallelujah.
learn to trust and the way for there is no other way but to be happy in Jesus if we trust and the way when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory why we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who would trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey Not a burden we hear Not a sorrow we share But a toy he does richly repay Not a grief nor a loss Not a frown nor a cross But it's best if we trust and obey There's no other way to be happy in Jesus But to trust and obey But we never can prove that the lies of His world Until all on the altar we lay For the favors He shows and the joy No other way to be happy in 
in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we pick up today's tithes and offering, we'll sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy we find Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path was from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning So thanks to God from all Hallelujah, Father, we thank you that we can lean on you because your arms are everlasting. We thank you, dear God, for your offering that your people has brought into your house. We pray, dear God, that you will bless it and may it be used only for your building of your kingdom in Jesus' name. We will call the children as we pick up today's building fund. Give the children a hand for singing so lustily. Our scripture today is taken from Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. As we stand, we're going to do it in two phases. Over here we'll read first and the other side we'll read after. Let's all rise for the reading of the word. Let's go. And, and 
and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Say that again for me, please. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Over here. And over here, repeat the same thing. And whatsoever ye do, as well. I'm not hearing it doing heartily. So let's go again. And. And whatsoever you do. Do it heartily. As to the Lord. And not unto you. Let's all say it together now. And. And whatsoever you do. Do it heartily. As to the Lord. And not unto men. Before the pastor come forth. We will sing. I will do a new thing in you. <coughs> I will do a new thing in you. I will do a new thing in you. Whatever you ask for, whatever. It won't be denied. It won't be denied. Said the Lord. If you believe so this morning, you will sing. I will do what you.
whatever you ask for whatever you pray for it won't be denied said the lord how many of us believe that that if we ask god according to his will whatever it is we ask for we will not be denied let us pray father we thank you that you are the way the truth and the life we thank you that your word is like unto you you sent your word the scripture says and heal them i pray that your word of healing will come forth today i pray god that your word would minister to every hearer every listener those present as well as those absent i pray god that you will help us not only to be hearers of your word but help us to be doers of your word i pray father that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer let your word fulfill the purpose for which it has been sent and may you alone receive all the glory the honor and the praise for you alone are worthy in jesus name amen i welcome all of us who are here this morning and those of us who will be listening of you in later and i give god thanks that he has chosen me to be the vessel to share his word with us this morning today is the second sunday in the month of january 2024 and for this month we are operating under the team committing ourselves to do more for god in 2024 committing ourselves to do more for god in 2024 last week we looked at the topic preparing to hear and do more in 2024 and we talked about fasting what fasting does what is expected of us when we fast and today i share with us on the theme committing ourselves to do more for god and on the topic whatever your hands find to do do it with all your might whatever your hands find to do do it with all your might we read the scripture a couple minutes ago found in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. I also want us to focus our attention on a verse of scripture found in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. It is similar to the verse that we read, but it has something else that I want us to note which is of importance to all of us it reads whatsoever thy hand findeth to do do it with thy might for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave where you are going let me read it again whatever your hand finds to do do it with all your might for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave where you are going the reality is we are all going somewhere And the place where we are going, there is no work there. 
You see these cell phones that we can't put down for a couple of minutes? In that place where we are going, there will be no device there. No cell phone, no computer, no none of these things that we are focusing on. There will not be knowledge there either. So all that you know now, it would not be there anymore. There will be no wisdom. You think you are wise? There will be no wisdom there either. For all of us at some point in time will be going. In fact, we are all heading in one direction. Young, old, middle-aged babies, we're heading to one place. Where is it? The grave. That's the reality. So whatever we can do, let us do it now that we have the opportunity to do it. If you have hands, I want you to wave them at me. Hands. Very good. Thank you very much. Some people don't have any hands. We're going to try it again. If you have hands, I want you to wave them at me. Thank you. God in his divine wisdom made all of us with hands. These hands have the ability to do many things. Just think for a moment of all the things that you use your hands to do from the time you woke up this morning until right now. Just think. Our hands are our body's main tools. They are often taken for granted. But if we spend a few moments to focus on them, hopefully we will appreciate them more than we did before. Our hands have 29 major joints. At least 123 ligaments. 34 muscles. 48 nerves. And 30 arteries. Only 10 to 12 percent of the entire population are left handed. How many left handed people wave your left hand at me? All right. Only one in 100 are ambidextrous, meaning they can use both hands equally. Anybody here? Ambidextrous, you can use both hands equally. Our fingers are more sensitive than our eyes. We use our hands to touch, to grasp, to feel, to hold, to manipulate, to caress, to pull, to push, to sweep, to carry, to wave, to point and so much more there is hardly a job that does not require the use of our hands and in the work of God there is a lot of work to be done in Matthew chapter 9 and verses 37 to 38 Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. The year is still young, 
And I want to challenge all of us today. If the Lord asks you to do something, do it. If the Lord sends you somewhere, go. If the Lord asks you to do something for somebody, do it. There are lots of people in our neighborhood and our community and our island and our region and our world who need to be cared for. Many of them don't know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And guess what? God is looking for people like you and you and you who have hands to help with the work. Tell your neighbor God wants you to help with the work. God wants us to help with the work. Too often we find ourselves in situations where a few people 10% of the people doing 90% of the work and 90% of the people looking on and criticizing the 10 for what they didn't do. Tell your neighbor, it's time to stop it. Tell them again, it's time to stop it. It's time for us, tell them, to do something. Some people complain that they are not so intelligent. Tell them it's not about intelligence. It's about having hands. As long as you have these here, you can work. You don't have to be tall or short, big or small, intelligent with no degree or uneducated as long as you have hands God didn't make a mistake when he said whatever your hands find to do do it with all your might in an article entitled the global church in 2023 christianitytoday.com they estimated that of the 8 billion people alive in our world today, 3.4 billion of them live in areas with little or no access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is believed that over 1 billion people in the world today have little or no knowledge of the gospel and little or no chance of hearing of Jesus Christ before they die. Let me say that again. About one billion people have little or no chance of hearing the gospel before they die. And God has given all of us such a privilege that we have opportunities Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, every single day of the week to have access to the word of God and to men and women who preach the word of God. My question to us is, what are you doing with what you heard and what you know? What are you doing with the opportunities that are available to you? There is an old hymn of the faith which I want to sing to you today. And as I sing the song, it says, Hark the voice of Jesus crying, 
who will go and work today? Who is willing to go and work? It's not about just coming to church and sitting down on Sunday morning. That isn't really working. There are lots of things to be done during the week. So are you willing to work? Some people make excuses. But there is, this is no time for excuses. When we have the opportunity to hear the word of God. It is not enough. It is not good to sit down and do nothing. Hark the voice of Jesus crying. Hark the voice of Jesus crying. Who will go and work? Today, fields are white and harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and strong. Master calleth rich reward he offers thee who will answer gladly saying I send me, send me. Janine, can we get it up, please? If you cannot cross the ocean and the heathen lands explore you can find the heathen never you can help them at your door cannot give your thousands you can give your widow's mites and the least you'll give for Jesus will be precious in his sight. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul you can tell the love of Jesus you can say he died for all if you cannot rouse the wicked 
Let the judgments dread a lamb. You can lead the little children to the Savior's waiting arms. If you cannot be a watchman standing high on Zion's wall Pointing out the path to heaven Offering life and peace to all with your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what God demands. You can be like Faithful Aaron Holding Up The Prophet's Hands Let None Hear You I'd We Saying no thing I can do while the souls of men are dying and the master calls Let his work your pleasure be Answer quickly when he calleth Send me if among the older people you may not be apt to teach. Feed my lambs, said Christ, O shepherd, bless the food within their reach, and it may be that the children you have led with trembling hand 
will be found among the jewels when you reach the The writer of this hymn nullified every excuse that we can give. There is work to be done. And there is something that every one of us can do. I submit to us today the reason why we are still alive here in St. Kitts and be able to come to church this morning. After all that we have been through, and I want you to think about the things that you have been through as an individual. We have been through storms. Physical storms and storms in our lives. We have been through hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and even the recent pandemic. Thousands of persons lost their lives, but we are still here. And God has us here to do something. Tell your neighbor, God has you here to do something. You're not here by chance. God has you here to do something. You are not better than the people who died during the pandemic. You are not better than people who went, who died in an accident. You are not better than the people who had a heart attack at age 45. You are not better than people who had a headache and died. We are no better. But God has us here to do something. Yes. You and I could have been dead. How many of us know that? I could have been dead 30 years ago. But I am still here. Because God has me here to do something. And I have made up my mind. That whatever I can do for God. I am going to do it. And I am going to do it with all my might. I am not going to do anything for God half-heartedly. Not me. Not when God has done so much for me. Not when I remember where he brought me from. Not when I consider how he helped me. Not when I consider how faithful he has been to me. I cannot do otherwise than do my best for God. And what I'm saying about me is what God is requiring from all of us to do something and to do our best. I want to ask us three questions today. And I want us to answer honestly. Question number one. You may want to know what should you do? Or ask yourself, what should I do? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 15, there's a story of a man named Moses. God had chosen Moses to do a job. The job that God had chosen Moses to do was to lead his children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses felt that he was incapable of doing it. Anybody ever feel incapable? Unqualified to do what God calls us to do. Let me say something to you. The majority of people that God used felt the same way. Incapable, 
unqualified. When God told Moses what he wanted to do, what he wanted him to do, Moses started making excuses. Moses said, Lord, I cannot speak. But how could he tell God he can't speak when he's speaking to God? So God said, who made your tongue? Who made your mouth? If God made your tongue and God made your mouth and God wants you to speak, he will enable you to speak. When Moses was sent down to Pharaoh, Moses was feeling a little uncomfortable. And he said to him, to God, in Exodus 4. Could you put it up for us, please? Exodus chapter 4. Moses said to God, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto me to my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto you. In other words, they will say, Who are you? That God spoke to you. We don't believe that the Lord spoke to you. How many of you believe that God still speaks to people? Where about me? All right. Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Next verse. The Lord said unto him, Help me read. Read it again. Wave those hands at me. What is that in thy. God smart, you know. God give everybody hands because whenever there is work to be done, he wants you to use your hands. He said, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. So hear what God says to him. He said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put your hand, put your, put your, put your, work with me this morning, everybody, put your, some people watching on the phone, the scripture is on the board, so let's work together. Put your hand and take it by the tail. And he put his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his go on to the next verse that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared unto thee and the Lord said furthermore unto him put your where into your bosom and he put his hand into his bosom and when he took it out behold his hand was leprous as snow and he said put thine into thy bosom again and he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom and behold it was turned again as his own flesh and so and it shall come to pass if they will not believe you neither hark nor listen to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign and it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs neither hearken unto your voice that you will take of the water of the river and pour it into the upon the dry land and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land 
And Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord. Now, imagine God is doing all of these things to help Moses. Throw down the, the rod. It becomes a serpent. Take it up again. It becomes a rod. Put your hand in your bosom. It becomes leprous. Push your hand back in your bosom. It becomes just as it was. And Moses, still not willing to go. Because some of us, we really don't want to do what God is telling us. Moses said unto the Lord, Oh Lord, I am not eloquent. How many of us say that? Lord, I can't talk so good. Neither hitherto for, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. Lord, I couldn't talk before. I still can't talk good. I am slow of speech. Lord, I, I really do, do not speak so very well. So, so please, and of a slow tongue. The Lord said unto him, what did the Lord say to him? Who has made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Moses, what is your excuse? You're talking to God. Don't tell God what you can't do. He made you. Now therefore, go. Go. And I will be with your mouth. Read the last part there for me. Read it. Read it again. So all who think that they excuse that you didn't go to school or you didn't finish high school or you didn't go to college or university or you don't have a degree or your doctorate or what have you. God is saying go where I'm sending you and I will be with your mouth and God will teach you what you must say don't worry about it tell your neighbor just go don't worry about it God gonna take care of it God gonna take care of it do you think that I know everything that God wants me to do? Do you think that I feel qualified to do what God wants me to do? No! But guess what? If he said go, I'm going. And he's going to tell me where to go and what to do and how to do it and what to say. And what he do for me, he will do for you. Tell your neighbor, God made your mouth and he will teach you what to say. Tell them again. God made your mouth. And he will teach you what to say. God can still use whatever we have. If we yield it to him. We just have to give our mouths to him. Brothers and sisters, I want us to give our mouths to the Lord. Say, Lord, take my mouth. Hold it so. Say, Lord, take my mouth. Say, Lord, take my mouth. You know what that means? When you tell the Lord, take your mouth, no corrupt communication should proceed out of this mouth. Because God ain't going to tell you to say nothing corrupt. There will be no evil speaking coming out of your mouth. Because God is not going to tell you to speak evil. So let's go again. Say, Lord, please take my mouth. Lord, please take my mouth for 2024. Say it again. Lord, please take my mouth for 2024. One more time. Lord, please take my mouth 
for 2024. When the Lord takes our mouth, he will teach us what, we, what he wants us to say. Whatever we have is enough for God to use. How many of us believe that? Whatever we have is enough for God to use. To do something miraculous in 2024. Sometimes we think it is only a select few that God wants to use. No. God wants to use every one of us. From the smallest to those who consider themselves to be the greatest. Sometimes we tell ourselves that we cannot do much. But little is much when God is in it. Do what you can with what you have. Tell your neighbor, do what you can with what you have. And do it now. So what should we do? Whatever our hands find to do. What should we do? Whatever our hands find to do. And we should do it with all our might. And we should do it now. Question number two. How should I do it? How should I do it? Do whatever you do for God willingly. Tell your neighbor, do what God wants you to do willingly. Tell your other neighbor, do what God wants you to do willingly. Do it as unto the Lord with all your might. When you do something with all your might, it means that you're passionate about it. Everybody know what I'm talking about? You're passionate about it. I want to ask you today, what are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? Some people are passionate about their looks. They have to put on these fashionable clothes and shoes and fix up the latest style and they're passionate about that. But darling, those looks are only for a while. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a little sick and all your looks, your looks gone in. I remember a young lady said, you see me? Boy, we really ain't nothing. She had a big, broad bum with hips. Mm -hmm. And you know how some ladies, when they have that kind of Coke bottle shape, how they flaunt it around? She got one dose of sickness and all it melt. Melt. And she said, well, look at me. I am nothing like what I used to be. Boy, we are really nothing. Just dust and ashes. What are we passionate about? We're passionate about people. What people say about us. We want a lot of likes and whatever in our posts. And if we post something and nobody likes it, you feel bad all day? Is that what you're passionate about? Are you passionate about education? Education is good. But is that what you're passionate about? And what are you going to do with it for God? Brothers and sisters, whatever we are passionate about, we must do it for God. If we're going to dress, we're going to dress for God. We're going to look good. We're going to look good for God. We're going to be educated. We're going to be educated for God. Whatever we are going to do, we should do it as unto the Lord. Very often people say, I don't do anything because nobody asks me. Where in them verses there he said that somebody must ask you? You see it anywhere? Go back to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. Let us examine the verse. 
Let us hear what the verse says. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. Help me read. You see anywhere in there so somebody must ask you? Anybody see it anywhere? No. Let's hear what, what um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 says. Let's see if it is in that part that somebody must ask you. Read what it says. I want us to look at the fourth word. What is the word? Find. Find. You have to go look for your work. How many of you want a job, but you sit down home? I want a job, you know. I want a job. I have my subjects. I got a good character. I, I, I could do things, but you just sit in your home. Do you think a job gun just come and drop in your lap? No. You have to go find the job. You have to go apply. You have to go and fill out forms. You have to go find the job, brothers and sisters. It's the same way in the work of God. You have to go find the work that God wants you to do. Some of us just sit in there and say, the pastor don't ask me to do nothing with your hard. Go find your work. You know why? Sometimes when we ask people to do something, they say, me only do it because the pastor asked me to do it. Listen, and so if the pastor isn't there, you don't want to do it. Don't do it for me. Do it as unto the Lord and do it with all your might. You know why? Only here you could work, you know. And many of us want good rewards when we go to heaven. Put up here, let me see. Good rewards. Lots of rewards. Guess what? Over there you don't work. Over there you get rewards for the work that you do here. So if you think that you're going to get good rewards over there, and all you're content to do is sit down and watch on. And we don't just sit down and watch on. You know what we do? We criticize. We complain. How is it that they didn't do this? And how is it? You know, when people come to me and they say, Pastor, I notice that the floor ain't look very clean. I say, join the cleaning team. Pastor, the window them no look clean. Join the window cleaning team. Pastor, the yard could do with a good little raking. Join the maintainers team. Clean the yard. Pastor, the bathroom them didn't look so fresh. Join the bathroom cleaning team. Lots of times, the reason why we can find fault is because we are doing nothing. But when we are busy, we focus on what we have to do. And we don't have time to find fault and criticize. How should I do it? With all my might. Instead of waiting for somebody to tell you what to do because you may be waiting a long time. Ask yourself, what can you do? What can I do? Anybody in here can't do anything at all? Mm -mm. Everybody can do something because guess what? All of us have hands. And he said, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Instead of waiting for somebody to tell you what to do, find what you can do. That is the word. Find what you can do. Find what you can do and do it. Do it with all your might. Why? 
because you don't have time to waste. Brothers and sisters, do you realize that it is late? That we really don't have time to waste? 2024 just started, it seemed like yesterday. And come tomorrow, next day, we will be halfway through the month. Mm -hmm. Just like that. So if we are going to do something, we need to do it now. The Living Bible says in Colossians 3 and 23, work hard and cheerfully at all that you do, just as though you are working for the Lord. Remembering that is the Lord Christ who is going to pay you. <laughs> it is God who is going to pay you. Giving you your full portion of all he owns. He is the one you are really working for. And if you do not do your best for him, he will pay you in a way that you won't like. For he has no special favorites who can get away with shirking. God ain't going to favor with you and say, oh, you didn't do nothing but still come. Mm -mm. God is observing every one of us and taking account of what we do. It is always interesting when there is a graduation ceremony or a prize giving ceremony. The people who work hard, sometimes you don't see them because some, some work is done behind the scenes. It isn't everybody who works up front. And when they call this person's name for best in class and best in this and best in that and overall best results, some people sit down behind and say, where they're going with everything. Am I talking the truth or am I talking the truth? But listen, you know why they're getting those rewards? Because of the work they did. And isn't it true that there are some children who are in the same class and they don't get a thing except maybe the certificate to say that they went to school. You know why? People are rewarded for the work that they do. If you want lots of rewards, work hard. Lots of time people don't see when you're working. They only see at the end what you have and what you got. And then they start to say, how come she get this and how come he get that? Work for what you want. Question number three. Why should I do it? Question number one was. What should I do? Question number two. How should I do it? Question number three. Why should I do it? Ecclesiastes 9 tell us why we should do it. Because there is no work. No device. No knowledge. No wisdom in the grave where we are going. Tell your neighbor, we go into the grave slowly but surely. Tell the person next to you, we are going to the grave slowly but surely. And brothers and sisters and young people, don't think that because you're young, your parents are going before you. You hear me? How many women are burying? Parents are burying their children. Yesterday, I just happened to be flipping through my phone and I saw a beautiful young woman. And when I looked, she, it was her funeral that they were conducting. Beautiful. But she has gone to the grave. She wasn't old like me. She was young. And people would think that when you're young, you have a lot of life to live, brothers and sisters. Everybody stand up. I want you to take 
two steps towards the door. And say, neighbor, we are going. We are going slowly to our grave. Go back to your seat. Yes, we're going to our grave. You want me to tell you something? Every one of us going to our grave, whether we want to think about it or not, that is the reality. And when we get there, there's nothing that we can do. In fact, when you're dead, you can't do nobody a thing. If somebody don't come, you here, you here stay as they are. If they do not dress you, whatever clothes or no clothes you died in, that's how you're going to remain. If they don't fix you, however you die, that's how you're going to stay. Can't do a thing. If they don't bring you in the church, you can't come in. And if they don't take you out, you can't go out. You have no say. No say whatsoever. So brothers and sisters, know that we have a say. Let us do what God wants us to do. None of us know how far we will reach in 2024. We have no guarantee that we will have weeks, months, or years to do what we can do. Some persons are alive, but they are unable to do much for themselves because of illness or some other reason. For 2024, let us commit ourselves to do more for God. Do not procrastinate. Do it now. I have a friend. Whenever I speak to him, he will say, I'm going to do it, you know. I'm going to do it. I'm going to come to church. I'm still waiting. Last year, I waited and waited and waited, and the year finished. I call him. Last week, I said, the year 2023 is done, and I haven't seen you. I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Brothers and sisters, when we keep putting off things until a later time, lots of times we don't get it done. You may say, one of these days I'm going to serve the Lord. Today is the day to do it. Today is the day to do it. Have you asked the Lord to forgive you of your sins? Have you made Jesus Lord of your life? If not, do it today. Do it now. Is there something that the Lord told you to do? And you haven't done it as yet? Do it. Do it now. Is there something that you promised the Lord that you would do? And you haven't done it as yet? Do it. And do it now. Is there someone the Lord sent you to speak to? That you haven't gone to speak to that person as yet? Do it today. Do it now. Don't put it off. Last year, I was at home and the Spirit of the Lord said, you need to go and speak to this particular person. I stopped what I was doing, I got myself ready, and I went. Had a conversation with the person, gave them an opportunity to give their life to the Lord. They said the prayer, I believe that they made it right with God. But it's between them and God. The following day. That person died. I said to myself. Just suppose. I didn't go. 
just suppose that was the person's last chance and I didn't obey. Can you imagine how I would feel today? When God gives you an instruction, he sends you somewhere, he tells you to do something, do it and do it right away. Don't procrastinate because you don't know how much time you have. Neither do you know how much time the person has. My brothers and sisters, we don't need great talent, high IQ, a PhD, or any special ability. As long as we have hands, let us do what we can do. Let us use what we have and do what God calls us to do faithfully. Do you have a chance to give some money to somebody? Maybe the Lord sent you to give somebody some money. And some of us very, very disobedient. I recall a few years ago, I was on my way to Connery. I reached the last roundabout. <laughs> and when I got to the last roundabout, I realized that the thing I was to be carrying, it was at home. I said, Lord, well, why did you allow me to come all this way? And as I'm driving up the road, a lady stepped out of a bus. And as I saw the lady, I heard the spirit of the Lord say, give that lady this amount of money. I took the money out of my bag and I called her and I gave her the money. She said to me, thank you. She said, you see this little bag I have here? I went to buy a little bit of food because my husband isn't working anymore. And this is all that we have. I don't even have money to buy bread. And as I am speaking, the bread boss came around and she said thank you because I could use the money you just gave me to buy bread for myself and for my husband. Listen, let me tell you something, sisters and brothers. The only hands, let me see those hands, that God can use in this earth are these. Wave them at me. These are the only hands that God is going to use on the earth. If we refuse to allow God to use our hands, we will forfeit our reward. We will not receive the reward that we hope we will get. So as I close... I want us to say whatever I can do come on whatever I can do with my hands Lord help me to do it with all my might whatever we plan to do whatever we can do Whatever we hope to do one day, do it now. All of us will be rewarded. Not for what we plan to do. Not for what we could do. But we will be rewarded for what we do.
fading away like the stars of the morning losing the light in the glorious sun thus would we pass from the earth and its toilings only remembered by what we have done only remembered only remembered only remembered by what we have done thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling only remembered by what we have done let's all stand and help me sing this song 